Got you. is an output on life like you know not everybody's from the hood like graffiti doesn't mean you 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 know you a hoodlum or something like that you could be your average you know guy coming from a regular house or mansion and bombing like it's just like expressing yourself man and that's the best thing to do in life express yourself speak up like you know and if you can't speak tag a wolf A writer is somebody who lives, breathes, and ships graffiti. <laughs> A writer is, is actually an artist. Just trying to be, be liberal, be free with their situation. You know what I mean? With their with they skill, with their art skill. People don't understand that when you hit a wall, even though we're destroying or doing whatever you think we're doing, we're actually putting art. We're trying to express ourselves. Try to be free with the situation. Where, where in, in the art world, you go and paint, and they tell you what to paint or how to do it. Where here, you don't have to do it correct or have the straight line. You can always do it anywhere you feel comfortable. So it's a freedom of speech, you can say. That's a need. I think, like, if you a bomber, you hit in these streets. If you paint, you paint. You, if you if you if you a real pizza, you pizza. You hit black books and all that extra stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right in. Everybody basically grab a camera and shit. You see me? Whoever just want to go out there and just get their name up. That's the writer right there. For everyday life. I go to work. Catch tags. Go to school, catch tags, do whatever I do, catch tags. That's just me. Bombing, man, is just, just, just getting your name out there, man. You know, it's, you know, graffiti to me is like, it's like being a basketball player. If a basketball player is really good at what he does, being a basketball player, he gets all the fame. Or well, being a graffiti writer is just the same way, man. You know, you, you go out there, you lay your name down. People start seeing it all over the place. You get your fame that way. Same way. Someone who paints. Uh... I would say that illegal would have to be a factor, but I know there's a lot of people that put in a lot of work and now just stay on legal, and I would still consider them already. I'm definitely a bomb. Uh, I bomb every day of my life. A bomb on writer, I do this. A writer is a bomb, you know what I'm saying? But then you get to pieces in this day and age. You got tons of pieces. You do not get burgers. Eagles and sponsored by the paint companies. It was all cool, but it's not the same essence of writing. It's straight up strong with the name, bonding with the skill, beautiful, hand styles. Something that you see somebody's name and place that doesn't belong, but it's written so beautiful. 
forget about the illegal side, the cannabis, you can't help but to, to look at that beauty. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking, that's right. That's, that's the essence of graffiti. Jedi, <laughs> Samurai, Monk, that's pretty much it. start to grow like more and more through that and whether that be progression through it as a writer and as an artist or digression through it as a person you know what I'm saying like names is, is literally like other than the form of writing like the fucking letter combination of the name you have to go through that shit <laughs> yo, that's a dead given, yo. That's like writing your name on the wall. You really gonna do that? <laughs> uh, if you're writing your actual name, it gets kind of sketchy, I would think. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like being like 007. You don't need to know my name to know I'm gonna have that fame. It's, it is what it is. You always like that nickname. That nickname is always the best. I can always hide behind it if I have to hide behind it. Nobody knows who it is. Because graffiti is that state. Everybody wants to be a certain thing. In this life, this society, you got licenses, you got license plates, you got social security numbers, you got government names, addresses, phone numbers, all that. You could make up your own alias. You could put some letters together and create your own identity. Said they don't want to go to jail. You need an alias so they don't track you down back. And and also it's just like a name that either somebody gives to you or you Give yourself, and it's like you want to see how far you could go with that name, what you could do with it, you know. And, and uh, it's just like an, an alter ego, another person. I'm about to be sky, it's like some people like to be behind the scenes, nobody likes to be like a front thing. So, like, all it is, what I get from these people. I grew up, I really liked the, the cartoon uh, Heckle and Jekyll. Just something that stuck with me as a kid. And, and uh, when, I, when I was, it, it's not the first thing I wrote, but I came up with it like a year after I started writing and stuck with it. Yeah. Um, I guess it's just, you know, you find letters that flow, find a name that's catchy to you, you know. My name is Sketch, you know. I had a real sketchy life. I like to draw, I like to do sketches, but, you know, I like it. I like a lot of letters. A lot of people choose, you know, four letters or less. I like big pieces. Okay. With, with movement, you know. You 
you end up in the most bizarre, far out places, grimy, dirty. You end up in places that people haven't been in in years. Usually just taking a walk, different sides of town, going out late, real late. After midnight, way after midnight, early. I search them by, you know, walking the street. I walk everywhere I go. Uh, looking at the spots that I get to see that are up, up in your face, you know? You can't, you can't miss them. Typically, I use the Try to work with the environment and take the odd shape. Try to take the fucked up spot. So that's usually the motivation. I just follow the train tracks and set out on a journey and basically find either a place under a bridge or an object that I feel that I want to paint and set out the paintings. Um, the main thing I like to hit though is I like to hit the train lines and the highways, rooftops, you know, things that are hard to get. A lot of people can't get to. Yeah, straight tags, streets, walls, train tracks. Train tracks, I like hitting throwies and stuff because right now we can't really, you know, hit, hit the train like we really want to. But when it comes to hitting the tracks, it's like you're really in the, you're in the train scenery, you know what I'm talking about? So it's like, that's what I like hitting right now, the train tracks, the freight trains, you know, them, them things go around. They see, I, I look for a spot where, um, they see there's a lot of traffic, you know what I mean? And it has to be a spot that's going to last, you know, um, mainly high spots and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Something that's not too close to the street and shit, you know what I mean? But something that's far where even on the highway you can drive by and from a rooftop, you can, um, you know, you can just see it, you know? And something that's gonna last and shit, that's not gonna get fucked and shit. So it's like, yeah, like graph niggas, like we got like billboards. You ever see that? You ever do that? Like you be on a highway, you see like the top of a oh, building, yeah, you be like, fuck, no. how the fuck you get there? How do you even get up there, you know? Yeah. We got to look for the canvases on depending on what colors we have, though, right? Cause... Yeah, man. It's just like that, it's just kind of a, what's a, a, a name kind of thing. You a writer, that shit, and you she dope shit, but like, like yo, see one of the little, little, little niggas put it on Instagram, he was like, how a, how, a, how a writer sees the world, and it was like, you know, regular scenery, and he was like, fame spot, bomb, tag, stomper, feeling throwy, like, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. Like, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a sport to it, too, like, you know what I mean, get up, it's dope, it's like, it's like everything dope. You see where, where you get the traffic, you don't want to write your name, but waste paint when nobody gonna see it, you know? We ain't here now, but eventually people gonna see this shit. They gonna be like, these niggas were the first one. help but to scan everything all the time. You're like a terminator. Always scanning every wall, looking for a place that can have your name shining on you. Know? It could be the highest, it could be the most dangerous, the hardest spot to get to. But I guarantee you, if you are a dedicated writer, you will find a way to get up there. And when you get up there, you better rock the dopest fucking shit you can think of. Target how you choose it, and so many different ways, but sometimes you can just happen by mistake. You just might glance to the left and see the fucking spot in your life, and you'll be the first one to hit this. For me is wherever the fuck you can see it, whatever makes it noticeable for me. And you know, on top of that, putting in a spot where you know that everybody's gonna see it, not just me, because I, I like to see my own shit. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, but I I, I just I just think that everybody should should enjoy 
you know, seeing this to the motivate other people because this is a, this is an art that's eventually gonna die just because of the government and all the bullshit that they they talk about over the time. You know, I'm not paying uh, busy train lines to daylight. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, it's like I said, every almost every day. Man. So scenery like this, um, underneath the bridge, underneath the highway. In the middle of the afternoon, this is like your comfort. Well, I definitely, I definitely love to scope, love to scope, uh, scope it out. Excuse me, scope it out before I go and do this. You know, you can't just walk up on something and just do whatever you want to do. You gotta definitely look at it, see what's going on around it, see what's happening, see what's the traffic, see what's passing by so on and so forth. You just don't walk up to anything. And just, you definitely got to scope it out first. If you don't scope it out, you're bound to get caught. You see the cameras, you know, every day, everywhere these days got cameras, you know, so you definitely got to watch what you're doing. High school and my friend died. And uh, the night that he died, I wrote his name everywhere. So the school can see it, everyone saw it type shit. Um, they left his name up for like a month. And I wrote that shit like fucking everywhere. And I wrote that shit in blue because, you know, anything ceremonial, I feel personally, I write in blue. So that's like dead homies and shit. That's like messages I want to say. Like I always write in blue because of that. Uh, yeah. The, the time I, I felt like it was the most important for me was when I wasn't doing it for myself. And I felt like during those times, I really had a purpose in that. In a way where I can, you know, say it, like how I feel and shit. And I know people are gonna back that shit because that's how they're feeling too. Yeah, every time I wrote a dead homie's name on the wall, that's when, you know, shit was real for me. That's when all this other minuscule, fucking surface level shit never mattered, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was you know, fuck who got the most stuff, fuck who got the ill style. It's why you write it, you know what I'm saying? Who you writing for? Graffiti is one of those things that basically chooses you in a way because if you're in this motherfucker, if you're around this shit, you got any sense of artistic flair and fucking balls, you don't want to do it. So it just was everywhere, so I just it was always about it. I always saw it, looked at it, loved it. So I had to do it. I was one, you know, two way at one time. Just like every one of my friends. But I wanted to be a fucking dope guy's right. So I fucking did. I always had a curiosity about the media ever since I first seen it in school when I was growing up, or I just seen that splash of color on the wall and I was really curious about who did it, where it came from, and how they did it. So I set out to, to find that paint and try to figure out, you know, how I got there, how to, how to learn how to, how to do it. Well, most of it, man, had to do with being watching it as I was growing up. I came up in a very good time in the 80s. Um, everything was developing at that time. Everything started getting bigger and brighter. Uh, my brother, his partner, Pace 2, used to write before me. 
And you know, my brother had a piece in his room that Bass Tooth did, and that always stuck in my head. When I was like 13, 14 years old, I used to go in there, and my brother had the coolest room because he had a piece in his, he had his name as a piece. He had DJ equipment. So I used to always be up in there, and little by little, I started writing and jotting down stuff. Next thing you know, man, you know, they was always telling me, nah, you can't call me, you can't call me. I started going out of school, hanging up in bathrooms, little by little, as I got to high school, started doing buses and trains, uh, motion tagging, really. Then I started meeting the right people, do a car here, car there, talk about them there. You know, just kept going off from there, man, you know. And most of the times, I did street bombing, to let it be known. I was more of a street bomber than anything. I would go from party to party, with a flat black in my, in my jacket. And every party I went around, every weekend it was always parties, so we used to go out bombing. And that's how we used to get down, that's how I started getting my fame. I was, I was always in my class, drawing and doing random stuff with my books. And, I don't know, just being like, you know, being a kid. And eventually somebody showed me that you could go out there and do something with your art. And I had to listen to, to people that, that do art the way they do it. You could do it the way you feel comfortable. And, it, and it'll get recognized, even if it's not in, you know, professionally or, or whatever you want to call it, but you get noticed. And, and it, became, it became a, how can I say, a sickness for me. And as I, as I got older, all I did was just think about going bombing and having fun and meeting new people. Because I met a lot of people in this, in, in just doing this, that are actually, that are actually either famous or, or even have some kind of business that, that you probably use on a regular basis and don't even know it. I was doing graffiti on my way to school, um, and from there, I kind of like tried to re replicate it, I guess, and it just didn't work, and I slowly became obsessed with it. Man, it was probably the first time I went out, probably in like 2002. Okay. When I started bombing, and uh, I went out the first time, and I just caught a rush. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like this weird rush that I can't even explain. You know, and that night that I first picked up the can, I knew that I was gonna do this for the rest of my life. You know. Chill. He just started. I'm going to climb up on the roof. All I hear is that mad commotion. I look over the roof, nigga. Then they had a machete on the nigga. You know, I'm old Puerto Rican niggas like that. Ain't nigga want to hear that? Ain't no art shit, nigga. Fuck you, bring my shit, nigga. 
Long story short, I, I, I was able to get out of there. He, he he finally ran. I got up out of there. Man, I jump in the fucking, I jump in the, um, in the Audi and shit. Niggas must have seen my car or something. Niggas must have seen my car and shit. The niggas seen me like a couple down, couple um, couple blocks on the block. I thought it was in my hood. I thought, I'm thinking I'm Gucci. The same car that was chasing us. See, I'm looking at him, but I can't tell. I, they all looking at the driver. The passenger pull out. And I went to go run. And I, I didn't, I, I didn't know I was hit. I thought, I, I thought I fell. I thought I like, you know, you go take a step and you miss it. I'm behind the car. Oh man, these niggas murderers up at the right. story I can recall is uh one night me me and a couple other homies was on this rooftop you know I'm not gonna state their names you know what I'm saying but we was on this rooftop one time hitting this spot and uh we had this ladder that we found in the lot you know what I mean we grabbed a ladder use that shit to climb up the spot or whatever like that and uh when we was when we was done with the spot we come to look down the ladder done fell on niggas. So now we stuck on the roof trying to figure out how the fuck we gonna get down. One of my mans just said fuck it and just jumped down and shit, bro. Got fucked up for the team, my nigga. Like, real shit. Got fucked up. I mean, scrapes. Done got stabbed by some wild shit. We didn't even know what it was. And just got real fucked up, man. Fucking just... That saved the crew, my nigga. Like, just threw the ladder back out there. Like, he ain't even get rocked, my nigga. Like, and shit. Like, <laughs> when my man, listen, I was the first one that came down that bitch once that shit got back up there, you feel me? And then when my man, my other man, because those three of us, you feel me? When my other man went to come down, the whole ladder fell on the nigga. And he got rocked. So at the end of the day, I was the only nigga that got saved out of that whole point, you feel me? But that shit was crazy, like. And niggas know what I'm talking about. When they see this interview, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be like, yeah, this nigga, niggas know exactly what I'm talking about. You feel me? That shit is crazy, dude. Yeah. Hey, uh, I've had a couple moments. Every time I go out is a moment, but I had one time where I was in the building and uh, the cops ended up brushing the building and I kind of had to hop down and run around the roof. I mean, every night, honestly, is a weird experience. I'm always doing, you know, way and beyond crazy styles. Things. Yeah, recently, I was in the room tent just yesterday, and I was trying to do a film. The cops were sitting outside the building, messing up, watching us, so me and my boy took off. I ain't ran from the cops in a while, so it was kind of crazy, but it is what it is. It was I remember running from the cops one time. He was like, Six or seven deep through in I 95, and I'm bombing the wall, and I see the blue light flash through the wall, and I turn around, and I see the squad cars about to get off the same exit to the ramp that we were bombing. So we had literally about 10 seconds to get up back on the street and find a place to hide. That's exactly what we did. I went head first to a prison force. My face was literally on the, the, the root, the heart root of that fucking pretty bush, man. And my face was all cut up. My lip had a fucking pricker right in it. And, but I had to duck down. It was like a Vietnam, so you know what I mean? The fucking flight, the flashing lights, the beam. They, they didn't get out of the car, but they was like searching for the spot. And you know, it was like good, a couple deep and shit. We just sat like fucking, fucking some camouflage communities and shit. So we just stuck out of there. That's it. It's over. We left it. We just disappeared. So, this is one of the times. So many times. So sick. Sick story. You know, in Las Vegas, and I was getting down on some metal. And, uh, you know, they got the ghetto birds out there. The police cars out there, so. 
actually the, the helicopter started, started flying over where I was painting. And um, so I crawled underneath the, tr the train to hide from it. And the train actually started to move. So when the train started to move, I had no choice. I was scared. I left my bag on the train. I went to reach for it. Like I almost lost my arm. But at the same time, the train police were on the other side of the train driving on the road. So it was a little scary. I was falling off the green sign in Miami. That I remember quick. I actually fell to the floor there and almost died. Yeah. That place is extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous. Take it oh, away. I know, it's even worse. Uh, I've been into a lot of situations over the 31 years that I've been painting. Uh, one of the most risky situations I've been in is like, you know, doing. Uh, Elevated trains, trains, and uh, those are the hardest. You know, those are the hard because you gotta watch where you step, and if you don't watch where you step, and you're gonna fall right through that hole. You're gonna land up downstairs. You're gonna be in the world of hurt. Well, along with um, Anik, I was painting in Rye, and we was hitting the train line, and um, I don't know. I was, I guess, I was too close to the train, the train track. I jumped out real quick <laughs> and I stabbed my fucking hand with the with the I guess an old rusty railroad track that was sticking out the ground. My shit was leaking, gushing all over the place and I still painted. I had chrome all over my fucking cut. I rocked it out with Amic, then I went to the hospital. The craziest part was telling the nurse that I actually fell off a bike doing this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, me and my boy Rex. We went out and we um we was on the Route 8 and shit. We climbed the highway sign. It was like summerish and it was all wet and shit from precipitation and shit and then boom, we up there, about to hit the highway sign. Stay trooping right by mad slow and shit. Had it shook as fuck. We had to just run and jump off that shit and be out. Let's see. Ready? That's just one in particular. Uh I think the most recent one and shit, yo, you know what I mean? We was, it was about five of us and shit, yo. We was at a rooftop and shit. And we had a ladder up there and shit, yo. It was about two in the morning and shit. We already hit, we already run around Bridgeport and shit, yo. So it was a one last stop and shit. We was like, fuck it, we're gonna hit this rooftop. So we, went, we all went up there and shit. And um, one by one, we all went up there and shit, taking our time and shit, you know what I mean? Smoking up there and everything and shit, yo. So we, we were sleeping and shit, you know? So um, I guess somebody was looking out the window in a nearby or something and shit. Call the cops and shit. Thinking we was trying to um, steal satellite dishes from the roof and shit. <laughs> so um, from the front and shit, we seen the boys coming and shit, you know? So we all ran and shit through the back and shit. We all jumped off the roof and shit, you know? Um, How big was this roof? So you jumped uh, off the Yo, it was pretty low, man. It, it wasn't too high and shit. I'll say about two stories and shit, you know, you know what I mean? And um, we all got down pretty quickly and shit, yo. One of the boys ran and shit. The boys were in the back ready and shit. He got tasered and shit, yo. Um, we all tried to hide and shit, yo. And um, they just caught us and shit. They whipped the ass and shit afterwards and shit, yo. Yeah, um, yeah, well, they, we got booked. <laughs> Ooh, the most risky. New York City, 2007. Most recent one, not too long back. I actually went down to 59th Street Bridge that usually takes you to Queens. Okay. And I actually jumped over the gate and climbed down. It was close to winter time. Everything was iced over, there was water. And I climbed to the base of it. And I did a stomper just like you see here. And I literally almost slipped. And it's literally almost, you say, 15 or 20 floors straight down to the ground. There's nothing to hold you. So, to say daring or crazy, that's a crazy thing I did. And and that's not the first or only. I have I have dozens of stories, but that one sticks out in my mind because it was something that I did, got away with. Literally went out and saw it, and everybody hit me up and saw it from Queens, from Manhattan, even on the highway. So I missed that spot because they cleaned it, but I loved it because it gives me the memories that I know I did it. You know, not when anybody, not just anybody could just climb a bridge and hit a bridge. It's almost impossible. But, you know, I can say I did it, just like a couple other people could say they did I know that I fell off a, a roof a few years back. It's my own fault, but I fell off and on a bunch of glass and concrete. Ended up with a dislocated appendage. Tried to pop it back myself to no avail.
could be both. It depends on where it is and how you go about it. It could be destructive. Also, it could be very creative in its proper place. Um, you know, a lot of people, they're just going out to do vandalism or hate graffiti. You know, that's not cool. But in its appropriate place, you take your time, you're artistic, you're creating murals. And uh, it's a way to express your feelings and, and you have a voice that has to be heard. So that, that you're sharing with the world. Study in a way where I guess you can incite the minds of like normal, like civilians, I would say. Like say if I were to write something on the wall to make people feel a little more uplifted in this depressing society of Bridgeport, Connecticut, then yeah, it's definitely beneficial. You know, I feel like you can walk the path of both, you know, um, just as much as you are able to have enlightening messages written throughout the city. You know, it's the, it's the duality behind it. You're destroying as much as you're creating at the same time, you know? So that's just the paradox of it. It's, you know, it's, it's real fucking crazy to grasp onto that concept of you're destroying while you're creating, you know? So I'm still fucking learning that shit today and why I'm doing it and what I'm doing it for and who I'm doing it for, you know? But in the end, no matter how like righteous you feel like this thing is, yeah, you're still destroying shit. But, you know, fuck it. <laughs> That's just how it is. That's how it's always gonna be. It's always gonna be like that. So, I would rather say how I feel on a wall, you know, in a positive way, than try to damage anything in terms of, say, morale of people, or say, like, I would rather spread love than hate, and if that requires me to damage shit, then so be it. That's just, you know, the duality of it, like I said, so that's pretty much how I feel about that. I'm, I'm slightly biased because I've been doing this since I was 15 years old, and, and I see it as an art form. Um, I think it beautifies neighborhoods. Uh, then you got, you know, the scientific types of talking about this broken windows theory saying that when something is written on or broken in the neighborhood it attracts more broken things and more graffiti and more this and that I don't particularly agree with it but those are the two opposing sides I, th I think it's it, especially as it's we've come into this era of graffiti it does nothing but benefit the community it's always been a positive to society because it's been used in more than one aspect it's been used in clothing, it's been used in advertisements, uh, it's been used everywhere. And if channeled the right way, graffiti's, graffiti's can launch itself into, you know, a positive direction. It's always going to be a positive direction anyway. Because it's, there's a lot more to it than just spraying spray on the wall. Right now, that kid that you're spraying on the wall could be doing something else, like robbing a liquor store or something else. You know what? Painting is better. Then you know what? Just do that then. I'd rather him do that. You know? Well, it's a positive for people who want to do something with it. And it's a negative for people who want to just, you know, like they say, do damage. But you gotta you have a fine line to what you call damaging and making art. And nowadays just because we do this, they can see they can send it destroying, but if you're not giving us the avenue to go out and paint and do stuff that you really want to do, how do you expect for people to react when they want to, when they want to do something? Because you think about it, and, and nowadays, you want to go skateboarding, you got to skateboard. You want to go to the mall and go shopping to buy whatever clothes you want to buy, you got thousands of malls. Where can you go and say, well, I want to do graffiti today? It's impossible. You got a skateboard that a cop will watch you and it'll probably arrest you for it. You go to a, a permission wall, only certain people can get on it because only certain people got that skill. What about the thousands or millions of other writers that want to paint or want to do it? What about them? You know, you got to realize that too. The best part of graffiti is the dose of reality it serves people. So it's kind of a double positive and negative. 
it wakes people up to those that don't want to see it but to those that inflict it it's like it's like a release you know it's Graffiti, the real graffiti shit is not some pretty shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like a fucking real fight. It's a real fight. So, how it can help things though? It keeps people it keeps people aware that we're not gonna we're not living in a false reality. You know what I mean? Shit is real. Graffiti is not it's not a published it's not our purpose, you know what I mean? It's part of nature, human nature. We just do it. it. Keeps us proud. Is expressing yourself a negative thing to society? No. From me? That's how I feel about it. Art is art. Uh, I would say a lot of people see it as a negative, but for me it's a positive. Um, so yeah, on the way that like I can like express myself the way I want to, um, wherever, wherever I take you. Know? And it's really like the only like pure art form now. Like that's out. I believe graffiti is supposed to be negative. You feel me? Like, cause if if you're trying to make positive positivity out of it, right? You're supposed to go. Do like a, a mural downtown where the kids like it and all that. But me, I like taking everybody out. I like just destroying shit, you feel me? So it's not gonna be no love and no hearts or none of that. It's gonna be a lot of rage. Cause when I, when I buy my rage on shit, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not, I don't really think about the consequences or who cares about it or what they like about it. I just do this for me. It's an art, it's like a lot of other people. Some people don't like it, some people don't like it. There's different aspects. You got the street violence, you got people that are decent, that people like colors. Maybe they can't even read it, but they still like it because of colors. You know what I'm saying? It always attracts regular society, you know what I'm saying? Graffiti? Yo, a benefit now. Yeah. Depends. You don't want to go to the storefront that's all covered in graffiti. You know, it gives you a bad, you know what I mean? Because of what people have made it out to be, but honestly, but this is art. I two or three hours doing a piece instead of being out there fucking around and getting in trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a, it kept me in here from doing it. I mean, I fucked up a lot of life, but you know, a lot of times we was home drawing, we could have been out there getting shot, you know so. It's, it's a it benefit, because people, I see, you see it more often in people getting paid for, the, for this shit now. Before it was just a crime, or it, it still is, it still is, but it just, it depends where you take it. But you can take your skills and do something positive with it, and then you can do shit like we're doing now. <laughs> Fuck this shit up. <laughs> At the end of the day, it brings us all together, you know what I'm saying? That's true. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't for the pain, where would we be right now? I'll be drunk as fuck, so much shit. <laughs> hey, I know, right? We still bring us all together, too, you know what I'm saying? It brings everybody together. Better than these days, man. Cause if you, for example, like this is the classic can, Rustoleum. You know, you have to put an adapter on it because they change it. So if you want to get like a better feel and better lines, you have to change it. You have to go through all these elements. These days, they make Montana Black. It's one of my favorite cans which is specifically designed for graffiti with low pressure. So if you compare the two, they have two different types of pressures. That, given that, now you're able to perform and sharpen out your letters and skills, as opposed to this just bursting out like a goddamn fire. So, 
I thought it was a definitely still good though for some big stuff. Uh, definitely still make it happen. A lot cheaper. Especially out here in Connecticut. But if I can I stole it for like three bucks. And everything else is like freaking seven dollars for Montana Black. Once in a while I'm spending dollars. Now everyone's trying to everyone's trying to be big, you know. Nowadays everyone's trying to, you know, come across the country. You know, it's not about all city. It's about going and destroying your country. You know, every state. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta travel. You gotta go and you gotta go and paint and you gotta show it. You know, fuck all the social media and and all that shit. You know, you gotta go out and walk. You gotta explore and do all that. All cities, when you take over, you take your, your territory for real. But really, all city came from the term, I should say, the term all city comes from writers that took over the five boroughs of New York. For example, EZ and Jobs. Bridgeport being the big city of Connecticut, I definitely touched every corner of this this fucking city. I mean, I've basically walked every street of this fucking city and left something, you know what I mean? Or just passed by it looking for a spot, you know? This is a competition. Every writer knows deep down the side they're trying to be better than the other guy. You know, as well as I do. I don't look at it competitively at all. Oh. They're both do, I guess. There's a lot of like ego bashing and stuff like that in your but I don't think necessarily there's a competition. Um, some people might like feel like they're competing with someone else, but mm -hmm. I just find it kind of like bullshit. I mean, there's competition and everything, everybody think they're better. Someone else, of course. It's always competition. You got more spots, you got you know, being more active, doing better pieces, wear. Not competitive, it's just every now and then you get that one person who just want to try it. Like, well, I'll get up there and just, like, well, I'm about to just take this thing out. I really think you can get with people like this. Decided they get beat the fuck up when you're taking all these spots. Bunch of pussies, man. There's a bunch of pussies out here. There's no, no competition for me, at least. I know that much. Because these niggas out here nowadays, they write your shit. And they, they sit here and line your shit and all that extra shit. And they don't leave no names. They don't want to say nothing. They don't want to say who it is or nothing. And then if, they, if you do finally catch the bitch niggas in the street, they don't want no static. Oh. I didn't know that was you. I was just trying to see who this was and blah, blah, blah. Nah, nigga, listen. I punch niggas in their face for this shit, man. I does this shit. You feel me? Like, hey, I'm not really with this fighting shit when it comes to this shit because it's not that serious. But if you really going to be dissing me out here, be a man about it. Don't be no bitch ass nigga about to be hiding behind your niggas or whatever because I'm out here by myself. You feel me? Like, if, uh, entire, I don't know what entirely competitive it is by nature. These days it's like competitive on the internet, which is a joke or something. Um, it's competitive by nature, you know. People want to get up and so you gotta you're in a spot right here where the shit's tight. Everybody's doing nice work. Everything you see is good. So it's just coming to the last of my stuff. So competition is what you make it and what you bring on yourself, you know. Competition is what you make it. Competition is what you make it and what you bring on yourself, you know. Everybody just wants to paint this it's a spot to paint to get up. Just know the rules, man. Respect the rules, that's all. Be a tough guy, don't be too fast. Too many people trying to be fucking Instagram whores. That's what it is right now. Because they see the, they, they get on Instagram because they get a couple likes, they think that they're the best of the best. And it takes a lot of work to get up there. It's not like you can do it overnight either. So, that's, a, that's where I think the feed is going right now. It just sucks ass though.
never. I think it's very important to hip hop. I think certain people don't acknowledge it because they see it and they don't see the action of how it gets done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I think it, I think it's good where it's at. Honestly, you know, it's 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 not in the limelight because it doesn't belong in the limelight. But mm -hmm. you know, you out there, you definitely know there's a part of life. You don't. Know? Well, they should. I would imagine because I mean, it, it is part of it. It's, it it's is one of the four tenets. It, it, it's one of the four. Yeah, you have breakdance, turntablism, graffiti art, and breakdancing. And um, yeah, absolutely, it's part of it. It's, it's a, like like hip hop's lifestyle. This is the hip hop lifestyle, really. I mean, it is. This is what we do. Right. I, I agree. Yeah. No, I think it has everything to do with hip hop. Not entirely always to everybody though, because a lot of people got into graffiti through the hardcore scene. Yeah. yeah. And have absolutely no connection to hip hop, but instead of punk rock and um, you know, like Sports Crew, Sports Crew, old school New, New York City crew. They they were based on a lot of those guys were hardcore shows, right? Am I right? Yeah, definitely. Like Hush and you know Cycle and OLM people met through that. Which Jack uh, Jack and I we also so uh, with. It definitely has. I'm a new writer myself, but I know it's a lot of you know writers coming left and right, you know. But it's it's influence, you know what I'm saying? Like if you listen to hip hop, it goes with the culture. So a lot of people. Been influenced like me. I've been riding my whole life, but I never really got into it until about a year ago. You know, but a lot of people definitely influenced. You know what I'm saying? From older dudes being around older dudes and seeing what they were doing and hearing stories about what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? Being on tracks, having tracks spots. Like you know, it's like you know, if you really want to do it, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do it. You have to feel like it's something to do. But it definitely has an influence. Like it is. I think kind of like graffiti is becoming more and more commercial nowadays because you see graffiti is it's like buses advertising on the side it's the same thing as graffiti and uh, but it's 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 illegal so mostly in hip-hop and rapping and MC and it's legal so you don't have to worry about anything and you kind of got to keep your uh, CYA you got to cover your ass a little bit in, in the uh, graffiti world because you never know who's who and you know who might who might be watching out there because graffiti is still a crime dj you can go into a fucking club and go and spin and spin your set mcs could still go and you know spit their rhymes and have what they you know what they do and then breaking we still have competitions we go out there and, and break you know they're all pretty similar but with graffiti it's illegal. It's still illegal. It's a crime, you know. And uh, and I mean, in in many ways, though, you know, it, it's still getting exposed. You know, a lot of a lot of famous people love it. You know, they they expose the art. You know, and it's it's good and it's bad. You know, it has a pros and cons. But um, but yeah, you know, that's that's why. You know, it's it's, it's really it's an underground. It's it's the most it's the truest underground element in hip hop, cause. You're putting in a lot of work, you know, to, to go out and and cause mischief. I'm not like this much. You put a lot of pressure and people are putting on shows, bringing it back to life. Because graffiti is not hip hop. See, hip hop took parts of graffiti and helped, graffiti helped define hip hop, of what hip hop is, but graffiti is not hip hop. Graffiti is an action by many different types of individuals that can give a fuck about the rap. And there's people that can give a fuck about rock. There's people yeah. that can give a fuck about classical music, but everybody that does graffiti does does it for their own individual selfish reasons. Graffiti hasn't become one of those famous things because graffiti is very selfish. It's all about the person, about the individual. So for some company to come around and say, hey, come work for us, uh, go write your name. Actually, you know what, go write our name and uh, we'll pay you a million bucks. It's not gonna happen, you know? That writer, no matter what, is a renegade to begin with. So, no renegade is gonna work for anybody. No matter how much you pay them, 
And if you do try to pay them, you could probably take your money and run. You know what I'm saying? But on the flip side of that, I appreciate hip hop personally mm -hmm. and what graffiti has visually done for hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like I know what I'm talking about. Like, like all the writers that I've ever known in my life. It's not about hip hop, man. It's not about rap music. It's not about break dancing, man. Because a lot of the dopest writers, they didn't do none of that shit, man. You know, a lot of the history makers, they didn't do none of that, man. They just wrote their name, the dopest, the dopest they could. And you get props for that. You know? Graffiti's about ups, getting your name out there. You know? All respect due to the elements, but I think I gotta speak it the way it is, man. And those real writers, I think they'll agree with me. Okay, okay, um, yeah. The the hip hop and the graffiti game now it has nothing in common. The only thing I could probably say is you know like you got a couple niggas that still trying to rap for the for the artistry and shit like that in the in the graffiti game when it comes to the music and the beats and all that. But at the end of the day, they producing it and they putting it on their mixtape covers and stuff like that, little graffiti tags and all that. But no, other than that, you're not hearing niggas talking about hitting walls and doing none of that. All you hear about is shoot this nigga, shoot that nigga, blah, blah, blah. It's, fuck that, my nigga. I'm about, I'm about listening to real shit that inspires me to go out there and crush it. You actually think that it has elevated because everything on mainstream, on mainstream TV right now is mostly done by graffiti artists. You know, you got people, you got people that do, that do tattoos, people who do like, Museum art, people that go across the world doing stuff. You even got people doing liquor bottoms right now with 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 designs, and these people are all are graffiti artists. Can you give one example of one? I uh, obey. His name is I, actually Chef Fisferrier. For a lot of people who don't know, he started off with doing slaps in New York City, and now he's worldwide. He does he does buildings. He has his own his own design on a on a on a Hennessy bottle. You know, you got a lot of you got a lot of different artists. Everybody starts somewhere. face I do is the same. Not every place I go and do is, is like a, a character I do throw ups too, you know, but like it's a different story. But like for the most part, I hope people pay attention to the progress I've been doing with my character, you know, it's, it's come a long way. People call it a booger, a angry potato, a senso bean. Call it what you want, man, but that's just my character. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of looking to be more surprised about what can be done and what's about to be touched, you know what I'm saying? Well, I really don't do it for other people. I do it for myself. Like I said, it's therapy. People, people can think what they want to think, really, about it. It's cool if they like it, but you don't. have that really figured out, man. I started this selfishly like everybody else. Just 
doing your thing. It didn't really mean what it meant to other people. It's more for us, it's more for me. In my case, it's more for me. So what does it mean? It means all kinds of things. If I'm in a gallery, I got stuff that I would say that what is what it means. You gotta write shit, but it just means getting better, just doing it. It's your, it's your outlet, something you do. You just get better at it for your own personal reasons. Just to know that just because you see me this, see me doing this don't mean I can't draw or I can't do art that goes in museums. I could do all that. Plus on top of that, fuck all the senses, fuck all the police. I'm gonna do this anyway so the day I die, I'm gonna go fuck about nothing else. And it's fun. It keeps me alive. It keeps me energized. It keeps me feeling like I'm 13 or 14 or 15 again, still jumping on trains and going to other boroughs to fuck shit up. I just want them to be happy, man, you know, and recognize that, you know, I put in my time and my work. That's about it. I don't want no special recognition to say that I'm better than anybody. I never try to be better than anybody. I never wanted to be better than anybody. I just want to do what I got to do and if people like it. More power to me. If they don't, I'm going to paint anyway. But I do get a good feeling when people tell me, yo, man, you know, that's dope work, man. It makes me feel proud, you know? It's that fun as shit. I want them to smile when I see my shit, you know what I mean? I want to make my own. Just make it happy and shit, you know what I mean? Just see it and shit, you know what I mean? And just, you know, put a smile on your face and stuff and shit, you know what I mean? I'm all more for a more fun, but you know what I mean? Something that's fun and shit, you know? It's all fun and shit, you know what I mean? The more fun I want, the more fun and shit, you know what I mean? Do you love it, you know what I mean? It becomes fun and shit, you know what I mean? So, okay. And so, um, one last question. Is there one thing you want people to think when you see your art? What was, yeah. the, um, was the thought that you wanted to be? I want them to be inspired to do whatever they want, you know what I'm saying? Inspired to do, to follow their dreams, you know what I mean? Do whatever their heart desires, you know? Okay. That's it, go out there and do it. Everybody, give, everybody gives a fuck what they think, Everybody gives a fuck what people think about them. You know, subscribe, tag, quit, bomb. That's why you do it, that's why you want your name, you want it to be seen, you want it to be fucking known, you want your mark to be remembered. And that's all I want. Just remember me, you know, how fucking this or that. Not being this right here, the person you see, fuck this. Just remember that mark. You know what I'm saying? The name that was up, how I did it. I did it like nobody else. You know what I'm saying? My fucking territory.